Welcome to this presentation of DBS4 Essential Tremor. My name is Patrick Blomstedt and I'm Professor in Stratetic Functional Neurosurgery at the University Hospital of Northern Sweden. Essential tremor is very common in Sweden and constitute more than half of the patients operated with DBS, which is in contrast to most places in the world where DBS for essential tremor is more unusual compared to other indications such as Parkinson's disease. Hence we have been able to gather a large experience in this field and DBS for essential tremor has been our primary scientific focus for 25 years. My intention is to here provide a brief overview for patients suffering from this condition and who are interested in learning more about this therapy. You will here get the same information as at a consultation at our unit, but in a more detailed and pedagogic manner. I believe that by having a good understanding of your disease and about the therapy you are receiving, you will be in more control of your life and that this will have beneficial effects both for your physical and mental well-being. However, I can of course here only provide you with general information without consideration to individual factors and my opinions are based on our own experience and might not be shared by everyone. Before continuing with this presentation, please have a look at the previous video, What is Deep Brain Stimulation? in order to be able to fully appreciate the details in the current presentation. Essential tremor is hereditary in 50% of the cases. It can appear in all ages, but onset is most common in upper middle age. About half a percent of the population is suffering from this condition, and it is common among the elderly, where 5% of those over 65 years of age are affected. It will normally start in the dominant hand and later spread to the other hand. Tremor of the head is quite common and is often considered as a problem. Tremor of the voice is not uncommon, but this constitutes a problem only in a few patients. Tremor of the legs is quite uncommon and seldom poses a problem. Essential tremor is a tremor of action, while rest tremor is very uncommon. Over time, the tremor will progress and often change its character. In older patients with severe tremor, it often has a higher amplitude, a tendency to more proximal involvement and a tendency to more jerky movements, and spontaneous improvement is rare. The tremor will in most patients respond well to alcohol and increase under stressful conditions. The patient will typically complain of difficulties eating, drinking, writing, etc. The social embarrassment of this condition is often perceived as disabling as the functional decline by patients and many will avoid social gatherings. Essential tremor is a cerebellar disease and affection of gait and balance are common. And problems with coordination of movements can also be seen in the hands, especially in the older patients with more pronounced disease. Beta blockers are the first line of treatment. It is estimated that 50% of the patients will not respond well to pharmacological therapy, and we will start to consider DBS if beta blockers or primidon do not have the desired effect. Other medications are only tried if DBS has been deemed unsuitable. The underlying cause of essential tremor is not well understood, but as mentioned, it seems as if the origin to the problem is located in the cerebellum. Pathological neural impulses will from here be propagated from nerve bundles for the whole brain and out to the peripheral nerves and muscles, where they will cause tremor in the hands and other parts of the body. By implanting electrodes, into these bundles in the brain, we can introduce new impulses that will block the pathological signals and hence the tremor. When the patient is referred to us for consideration of DBS for essential tremor, he or she will be evaluated by myself, our neurologist and our DBS nurse. The first thing we look at is the age of the patient. The brain is becoming more sensitive with age and at some point the risk with surgery will be larger than the potential benefits. Opinions on how old is too old differs. 
we will not accept patients older than 80 years, but others are happy to perform DBS in older patients, and I don't know who is right. The DBS nurse will evaluate the patient according to various scales. These evaluations are documented on video, so we can always go back after surgery to see what we have achieved with DBS. Importantly, the DBS nurse will also discuss in detail the aims of the operation with the patient, and the patient will write these down. If you are considering to undergo DBS, then it is important that you define for yourself what you want to achieve and what degree of improvement that would make you satisfied, and what impact you would expect this to have on your life in general. It is important that your expectations are reasonable, and if I believe that we cannot meet the patient's expectations, then I will advise them not to have DBS. The neurologist will examine the patient, confirm the diagnosis of essential tremor, that the medical treatment has not been satisfying, and decide if further pharmacological treatments might be tested before DBS. If there are signs of cognitive decline, then the patient will also be evaluated by our neuropsychologist. The neurosurgeon will make sure that there are no surgical contraindications, that the general health condition is acceptable, and that the patient has a reasonably healthy brain, as decided from MRI. Further, we will discuss the details of the procedure and make sure that the patient has reasonable expectations. Basically, I will accept all patients who consider themselves to suffer so much that they are willing to undergo surgery, that have reasonable expectations and no contraindications. In most patients who are deemed not suitable for DBS, this is not based on one single contraindication. The typical patient who I do not suggest DBS has some cognitive decline, an MRI demonstrating atrophy or vascular lesions, is close to the age limit for DBS, and often has some other issues regarding his or her general health condition. When we have decided on surgery, we need to decide if we should perform a unilateral or bilateral procedure, that is, to treat only one or both sides of the body. My opinion is that a bilateral procedure should only be done if there is a substantial tremor in both upper extremities or in the head. Bilateral procedures have a higher risk of complications, mainly dysarthria and disturbance of balance and gait, and this risk increases with age. Most of my essential tremor patients have unilateral DBS. I'm happy to do bilateral surgery in the same session in patients below 65 years of age. Between 65 to 70, I will do it in selected patients in two different sessions, but above 70 years of age, I don't recommend bilateral surgery. We will further discuss with the patient and decide on whether to use a rechargeable or non-rechargeable newer pacemaker. These have different advantages and disadvantages, and we'll try to find what is most suited for the individual patient. I have discussed how the procedure is done in detail in the previous video. We performed the implantation with the patient asleep based on the identification of the target structure in the brain on MRI and the location of the electrode is verified with an intraoperative X-ray investigation. But there are many variations in how the procedure is is done around the world. Concerning complications, stimulation-induced side effects, infections, hemorrhages, and hardware-related complications were discussed in the previous presentation. In general, DBS for essential tremor is a safe procedure with few complications or side effects of a serious nature, and well tolerated also by older and more frail patients. However, Often the patient will notice a post-operative edema. Immediately after surgery, an edema is formed around the electrode. Many patients will notice this as an improvement in their tremor, but about 7% will also notice an unwanted side effect, most often in the form of slow or slurred speech, or sometimes as a feeling of clumsiness in a limb. 
these symptoms will disappear within a few days or weeks when the edema resolves. A few of our elderly patients have noticed a slight deterioration of the balance after surgery. This is not so pronounced that we have been able to verify this with our tests. As I mentioned in the last video, the patient will stay a few days after surgery and return after four weeks to start the stimulation. Programming of the stimulation parameters is usually straightforward and most patients will not need to come back for any adjustments during the first year. We will evaluate the patient after one year and then every second year, or when needed. The patient is further equipped with a remote control that can be used for making minor changes in the stimulation, but mostly to turn the stimulation on and off. We strongly recommend the stimulation to be turned off during the night in order to decrease the risk for development of tolerance and stimulation-induced side effects, and in order to increase the battery longevity. In our experience, a non-rechargeable battery will last for about five years, and to change the battery is a minor procedure, which is done in about 20 minutes, with the patient awake or asleep. DBS for essential tremor is done in order to improve the quality of life for the patient and after surgery the idea is that you should be able to forget that you have undergone this procedure. The implants will not break or change position if you fall or suffer minor trauma and you can virtually do whatever you want without taking the DBS into consideration. Concerning the effect of DBS Almost all patients will have a good tremor reduction during the first months of the surgery. But unfortunately, in approximately 10% of the patients, we will see a poor effect over time. In some patients, this might be due to pro progression of the disease, but usually it is due to development of tolerance with increased stimulation strength over time. Eventually, this might lead to a poor result when the stimulation cannot be increased further due to stimulation-induced side effects, such as affection of the coordination of movements, or so-called ataxia. In such cases, we will try to lower the stimulation strength and ask the patient to use the stimulation only when really needed in order to preserve as much of the effect as possible. Thankfully, we have a good outcome in about 9 out of 10 patients. But it's re important to remember that DBS does not cure ET. Uh, it's only hiding the symptoms. According to the scales we are using, we will improve tremor and function in the treated hand with somewhat more than 80%. About 90% of our patients have what I consider to be a good effect of the operation. With this I mean that we have removed most of the tremor and that the patient now has a hand that is working and that can be used for drinking, writing and similar tasks, even if there might be some tremor left. I believe that about 90% of our patients are satisfied with the procedure. Some of them are very happy, while others are satisfied even if they had hoped for a better effect. The effect is rather stable over time, but in individual patients a deteriorating effect is sometimes seen with increasing age and progress of the disease. It is always easier to describe the results in images than with words, so let us look at a few examples. Here to the left we see a patient without TBS where we are measuring the tremor as seen in the curve. To the right we see the same patient with DBS, and we can see that the tremor is significantly reduced. Here we have a middle-aged man with bilateral electrodes, before surgery to the left and after surgery to the right. And we can see that also here there is a clear difference before and after surgery.
The last patient that I will show you here is an elderly gentleman with severe tremor. Often in such patients there will be some remaining tremor after surgery, but the results are in general good. Old patients will have as good an effect as young patients, and patients with more severe tremor will have the same level of improvement as patients with less severe tremor. However, the more tremor before surgery, the more residual tremor after surgery can be expected, and older patients tend to have more severe tremor both before and after surgery. Head tremor and voice tremor will usually respond well to bilateral DBS. However, also patients with only one electrode will often have a good outcome. In our experience, we will remove about 88% of the head tremor and 67% of the voice tremor with a single electrode. Here we see a patient where head tremor was reduced from moderate to mild with unilateral DBS. And here we can hear the voice tremor before surgery and after surgery. And with that I end this presentation and I hope that you have found the information to be of some value. Thank you for your attention.